Hi, I'm finally back. Um, sorry that I've just not been able to do anything. Um, it's, it's, I'm fine, I'm well. The people around me are fine, but as you all must understand, with this COVID business, there's been so many people having to isolate this, 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 and this. And we just couldn't get everything together. Anyway, enough of that. I thought today I would talk about Freddie's working with other artists and how his lack of confidence in himself, his, his, um, his feeling that he couldn't do write music for other people actually sort of caused... Um, so much not to happen, so much that could have happened that didn't. I mean, if you think, think back, um, I think the first cooperation he did was with Eddie Howell in Man From Manhattan. But of course, that was a song that was already written. He worked, he produced and sang on some of Peter Stroker's music. Again, it was music that was already written and Freddie was working with it. I think the next thing you can really talk is maybe Under Pressure with David Bowie. Again, it wasn't Freddie having to write specifically for someone and particularly that one, it was with the rest of the band, with a guest artist. Um, so he, he, he didn't have to really create so much you look after that um, I think Billy Squire he performed I think on three of the songs I know Lady with a tenor sax I think it was Emotions in Motion and Love is the Hero I believe I believe I my memory is slowly going, I'm afraid. Um, he, he, he did amazing things on those tracks. But again, they were actually written already by Billy. Um, he, he was very, very happy to work with people like that as long as he didn't have to write the music or the words for it. I think the next cooperation he did was with Joe Dare. Um, you know, the things he did with Joe... The thing, he, the film soundtrack he did for Joe Dare with Hold On. Um, again, it's, it, it sounds amazing. If you, you know, I've been listening to some of these tracks recently. That's why I came up with this idea. Um, it's... He put so much effort into it and they, all of the tracks that he worked with and worked on sound absolutely wonderful but he was he didn't believe that he would be able to actually write something for someone specifically to put you know to create specifically for someone so when Montserrat approached him in 86 87 wanting to do this track for the Olympics he really thought it was just going to be one track it already put him on edge a bit because he was going to have to create something for as far as he was concerned the best voice in the world so already he was on his back foot you know he'd step back a bit he agreed he was going to do it. He would meet up with her. He had Mike Moran, who gave Freddie so much, so much confidence. Um, Mike was able to see, you know, a few bars ahead when Freddie was thinking, was creating the music. Mike's brain was already there and working ahead. Um, when Montserrat turned round to him and said, well, okay, 
we'll do an album. <laughs> I think he really, really, I mean, he smiled and says, okay. But I am, he, he had so many doubts in his head. How, how was he going to be able to write eight, ten songs for this amazing voice? And for him, they were two totally different sides of the vocal spectrum. Um, I think also you have to remember the timing of this. Freddie started creating this album literally just after he'd received his diagnosis. So I think maybe what it did to him was actually put it into his head that if I am ever going to do something, I have this opportunity now, and how much longer do I have? Will I be able to do it again? He, I know, was so incredibly proud of that album of Barcelona. He, he didn't believe that he was going to be able to create what he did. And if you look at the music on it, the, the different styles with the Japanese influence, the, I mean, the holy operatic side, the uh, drama, the, the sentiment, um, it's all there, it's all covered. And he just, he just put his heart and soul into it. But as I said earlier, I, you, you cannot take away how much Mike Moran had to do with that. He gave Freddie that confidence. He was the one who was there always telling Freddie, you know, you can do it, you can do it. Look, try this way, look at it this way. He was there always. Um, and Freddie, I mean, he acknowledged it. He, he, when we, we were talking about the actual album, the Barcelona, after it was finished, and he, he just sort of let out this huge sigh of relief. Um, it was done. And for him, it was the hardest, biggest project that he had undertaken. But for him, it sort of validated his composition skills. He'd given some of the songs out for Tim Rice to write the lyrics for. Um, otherwise, it probably would have gone on for another year or two. Uh, but, as I say, it showed Freddie that he had the... He could do it. And maybe he could look back and think how much more he could have done. But it, that wasn't necessary. He had done it. And he was able to prove to himself as much as anybody else. This is what I can do. I love, I love all of his, I love all of his work with other people. It just shows different sides of him. Um, he was one of the most multifaceted characters I've ever met in my life. And I don't think I'll meet anyone the same again. I mean, he really was a one-off. Okay, enough from me. I'll either get sentimental and cry and all the rest of it. So please, please, please take really good care of yourselves. There is light at the end of the tunnel. We just have to get there, okay? And I promise I'll see you soon.